The Flowers of Evil. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Flowers of Evil by Charles Baudelaire. Translated by Frank Pierce Sturm. The Dance of Death. Carrying bouquet and handkerchief and gloves, proud of her height as when she lived, she moves with all the careless and high-stepping grace and the extravagant courtesan's thin face. Was slimmer waist e'er in a ballroom wooed? Her floating robe in royal amplitude Pulls in deep folds around a dry foot shod With a bright flower-like shoe that gems the sod. The swarms that hum about her collar bones As the lascivious streams caress the stones Conceal from every scornful jest that flies Her gloomy beauty, and her fathomless eyes Are made of shade and void With flowery sprays her skull is wreathed artistically And sways, feeble and weak, on her frail vertebrae O oh, charm of nothing decked in folly, they who laugh and name you a caricature, they see not, they whom flesh and blood allure, the nameless grace of every bleached bare bone that is most dear to me, tall skeleton. Come you to trouble with your potent sneer, the feast of life? Or are you driven here to pleasure's sabbath by dead lusts that stir and goad your moving corpse on with a spur? Or do you hope when sing the violins and the pale candle flame lights up our sins to drive some mocking nightmare far apart and cool the flame hell lighted in your heart? fathomless well of fault and foolishness eternal alembic of antique distress still o'er the curved white trellis of your sides the sateless wandering serpent curls and glides and truth to tell i fear lest you should find among us here no lover to your mind which of these hearts beat for the smile you gave? The charms of horror please none but the brave. Your eyes' black gulf, where awful brooding stir, brings giddiness. The prudent reveller sees, while a horror grips him from beneath, the eternal smile of thirty-two white teeth. For he who has not folded in his arms a skeleton, nor fed on graveyard charms, recks not of fur below, or paint or scent, when horror comes the way that beauty went. O oh, irresistible, with fleshless face, say to these dancers in their dazzled race, proud lovers with the paint above your bones ye shall taste death musk-scented skeletons withered antinous dandies with plump faces ye varnished cadavers and grey love laces ye go to lands unknown and void of breath drawn by the rumour of the dance of death from sane's cold keys to ganges burning stream the mortal troops dance onward in a dream they do not see within the open sky the angel's sinister trumpet raised on high
in every clime and under every sun death laughs at ye mad mortals as ye run and oft perfumes herself with myrrh like ye and mingles with your madness irony end of poem read by alan mapstone the beacons by charles baudelaire read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone rubens oblivious garden of indolence pillow of cool flesh where no man dreams of love where life flows forth in troubled opulence as airs in heaven and seas in ocean move leonard da vinci sombre and fathomless glass where lovely angels with calm lips that smile heavy with mystery in the shadows pass among the ice and pines that guard some isle rembrandt sad hospital that a murmuring fills where one tall crucifix hangs on the walls where every tear-drowned prayer some woe distills and one cold wintry ray obliquely falls strong michelangelo a vague far place where mingle christs with pagan hercules thin phantoms of the great through twilight pace and tear their shroud with clenched hands void of ease the fighter's anger the fawn's impudence thou makest of all these a lovely thing proud heart sick body mind's magnificence puget the convict's melancholy king watto the carnival of illustrious hearts fluttering like moths upon the wings of chance bright lustres like the silk that flames and darts and pour down folly on the whirling dance goya a nightmare full of things unknown the foetus witches broil on sabbath night old women at the mirror children lone who tempt old demons with their limbs delight delacroix lake of blood ill angels haunt where evergreen or shadowing woods arise under the surly heaven strange fanfares chant and pass like one of weber's strangled sighs and malediction blasphemy and groan ecstasies cries te deums and tears of brine are echoes through a thousand labyrinths flown for mortal hearts an opiate divine a shout cried by a thousand sentinels an order from a thousand bugles tossed a beacon o'er a thousand citadels a call to huntsmen in deep woodlands lost it is the mightiest witness that could rise to prove our dignity o lord to thee this sob that rolls from age to age and dies upon the verge of thy eternity end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sadness of the moon by charles baudelaire read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone the moon more indolently dreams to-night than a fair woman on her couch at rest caressing with a hand distraught and light before she sleeps 
the contour of her breast upon her silken avalanche of down dying she breathes a long and swooning sigh and watches the white visions past her flown which rise like blossoms to the azure sky and when at times wrapped in her languor deep earthward she lets a furtive teardrop flow some pious poet's enemy of sleep takes in his hollow hand the tear of snow whence gleams of iris and of opal start and hides it from the sun deep in his heart end of poem this recording is in the public domain Exotic Perfume by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. When with closed eyes and autumn's eaves of gold I breathe the burning odors of your breast Before my eyes the hills of happy rest Bathed in the sun's monotonous fires unfold Islands of Lethe where exotic boughs Bend with their burden of strange fruit bowed down where men are upright maids have never grown unkind but bear a light upon their brows led by that perfume to these lands of ease i see a port where many ships have flown with sails outwearied of the wandering seas while the faint odors from green tamarisk blown float to my soul and in my senses throng and mingle vaguely with the sailor's song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Beauty by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Stunning I am as lovely as a dream in stone, And this my heart where each finds death in turn, inspires the poet with a love as lone as clay eternal and as taciturn swan white of heart a sphinx no mortal knows my throne is in the heaven's azure deep i hate all movements that disturb my pose i smile not ever neither do i weep before my monumental attitudes that breathe a soul into the plastic arts my poets pray in austere studious moods for i to fold enchantment round their hearts have pools of light where beauty flames and dies the placid mirrors of my luminous eyes end of poem this recording is in the public domain the balcony by charles baudelaire read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone mother of memories mistress of mistresses o oh, thou my pleasure thou all my desire thou shalt recall the beauty of caresses the charm of evenings by the gentle fire mother of memories mistress of mistresses the eaves illumined by the burning coal the balcony where veiled rose vapour clings how soft your breast was then how sweet your soul ah and we said imperishable things those eaves illumined by the burning coal lovely the suns were in those twilights warm and space profound and strong life's pulsing flood in bending o'er you queen of every charm i thought i breathed the perfume in your blood the suns were beauteous in those twilights warm 
the film of night flowed round and over us and my eyes in the dark did your eyes meet i drank your breath ah sweet and poisonous and in my hands fraternal slept your feet night like a film flowed round and over us i can recall those happy days forgot and see with head bowed on your knees my past your languid beauties now would move me not did not your gentle heart and body cast the old spell of those happy days forgot can vows and perfumes kisses infinite be reborn from the gulf we cannot sound as rise to heaven suns once again made bright after being plunged in deep seas and profound our vows and perfumes kisses infinite end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sick muse by charles baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. Poor muse, alas, what ails thee then today? Thy hollow eyes with midnight visions burn upon thy brow in alternation play folly and horror, cold and taciturn. Have the green limur and the goblin red poured on thee love and terror from their urn or with despotic hand the nightmare dread deep plunge thee in some fabulous minturn would that thy breast where so deep thoughts arise breathe forth a healthful perfume with thy sighs would that thy christian blood ran wave by wave in rhythmic sounds the antique numbers gave when phoebus shared his alternating reign with mighty pan lord of the ripening grain end of poem this recording is in the public domain the venal muse by charles baudelaire read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone muse of my heart lover of palaces when january comes with wind and sleet during the snowy eve's long wearinesses will there be fire to warm thy violet feet wilt thou reanimate thy marble shoulders in the moonbeams that through the window fly or when thy purse dries up thy palace moulders reap the far star gold of the vaulted sky for thou to keep thy body to thy soul must swing a censer where a holy stole and chant te deums with unbelief between or like a starving mountebank expose thy beauty and thy tear-drowned smile to those who wait thy jest to drive away thy spleen end of poem this recording is in the public domain the evil monk by Charles Baudelaire, read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley. The ancient cloisters on their lofty walls had holy truth in painted fresco shown, and seeing these, the pious in those halls felt their cold, lone austereness, less alone, 
at that time when christ's seed flowered all around more than one monk forgotten in his hour taking for studio the burial ground glorified death with simple faith and power and my soul is a sepulchre where i ill cenobite have spent eternity on the vile cloister walls no pictures rise o oh, when may i cast off this weariness and make the pageant of my old distress for these hands labour pleasure for these eyes end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Temptation by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk The demon in my chamber high This morning came to visit me And thinking he would find some fault He whispered, I would know of thee Among the many lovely things That make the magic of her face among the beauties black and rose that make her body's charm and grace which is most fair thou didst reply to the abhorred o soul of mine no single beauty is the best when she is all one flower divine when all things charm me i ignore which one alone brings most delight she shines before me like the dawn and she consoles me like the night the harmony is far too great that governs all her body fair for impotence to analyze and say which note is sweetest there o oh, mystic metamorphosis my senses into one sense flow her voice makes perfume when she speaks her breath is music faint and low end of poem this recording is in the public domain the irreparable by charles baudelaire read for LibriVox.org by chris pyle can we suppress the old remorse who bends our heart beneath its stroke who feeds as worms feed on the course or as the acorn on the oak can we suppress the old remorse? Ah, in what filter, wine, or spell May we drown this our ancient foe? Destructive glutton, gorging well, Patient as the ants and slow, What wine, what filter, or what spell? Tell it, enchantress, if you can, Tell me, with anguish overcast, Wounded as a dying man Beneath the swift hooves hurrying past, Tell it, enchantress, if you can. To him the wolf already tears who sees the carrion pinions wave. This broken warrior who despairs to have a cross above his grave, this wretch the wolf already tears. Can one illume a leaden sky, or tear apart the shadowy veil thicker than pitch, no star on high? Now on funereal glimmer pale can one illumine a leaden sky. Hope lit the windows of the inn, but now that shining flame is dead. And how shall martyred pilgrims win Along the moonless road they tread? Satan has darkened all the inn. Which, do you love a cursed heart? Say, do you know the reprobate? Know you remorse whose venom darts Make souls the targets for their hate? Which, do you know a cursed hearts? The might have been with tooth accursed Gnaws the piteous souls of men. The deep foundations suffer first, And all the structure crumbles then Beneath the bitter tooth accursed. Often when seated at the play, and sonorous music lights the stage, I see the frail hand of a fay with magic dawn illumine the rage of the dark sky oft at the play. A being made of gauze and fire, cast to the earth a demon great, and my heart whence all hope expires like a stage where I await in vain the fay with wings of fire. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Former Life by Charles Bordelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Florence Short Long since I lived beneath vast porticos By many ocean sunsets tinged and fired 
where mighty pillars in majestic rows seem like basaltic caves when day expired the rolling surge that mirrored all the skies mingled its music turbulent and rich solemn and mystic with the colors which the setting sun reflected in my eyes and there i lived amid voluptuous calms in splendors of blue sky and wandering wave tended by many a naked perfumed slave who fanned my languid brow with waving palms they were my slaves the only care they had to know what secret grief had made me sad end of poem this recording is in the public domain Don Juan in Hades by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone When Juan sought the subterranean flood And paid his obolus on the Stygian shore, Charon, the proud and sombre beggar, stood with one strong vengeful hand on either oar. With open robes and bodies agonized, lost women writhed beneath that darkling sky. There were sounds as of victims sacrificed. Behind him all the dark was one long cry and scannerel with laughter claimed his pledge don luis with trembling finger in the air showed to the souls who wandered in the sedge the evil son who scorned his hoary hair shivering with woe chased elvira the while near him untrue to all but her till now seemed to beseech him for one farewell smile lit with the sweetness of the first soft vow and clad in armour a tall man of stone held firm the helm and clove the gloomy flood but staring at the vessel's track alone bent on his sword the unmoved hero stood end of poem this recording is in the public domain the living flame by charles baudelaire read for librivox dot org by bruce kachok they pass before me these eyes full of light eyes made magnetic by some angel wise the holy brothers pass before my sight and cast their diamond fires in my dim eyes they keep me from all sin and error grave they set me in the path whence beauty came they are my servants and i am their slave and all my soul obeys the living flame beautiful eyes that gleam with mystic light as candles lighted at full noon the sun dims not your flame fantastical and bright you sing the dawn they celebrate life done marching you chaunt my soul's awakening hymn stars that no sun has ever made grow dim End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Correspondences by Charles Baudelaire. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. In nature's temple, living pillars rise, and words are murmured none have understood and man must wander through a tangled wood of symbols watching him with friendly eyes as long-drawn echoes heard far off and dim mingle to one deep sound and fade away vast as the night and brilliant as the day color and sound and perfume speak to him 
Some perfumes are as fragrant as a child, sweet as the sound of hoboys, meadow green. Others, corrupted, rich, exultant, wild, have all the expansion of things infinite, as amber, incense, musk, and benzoin, which sing the senses and the soul's delight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Flask by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley There are some powerful odours that can pass Out to the stoppered flagon, even glass To them is porous, off when some old box Brought from the east is open and the locks And hinges creak and cry, or in a press In some deserted house where the sharp stress of odours old and dusty fills the brain, an ancient flask is brought to light again, and forth the ghosts of long dead odours creep, there softly trembling in the shadows sleep. A thousand thoughts funerally crystallides, phantoms of old the folding darkness hides, who make faint flutterings, as their wings unfold, rose washed and azure tinted, shot with gold. A memory that brings languor flutters here, the fainting eyelids droop and giddy fear, thrust with both hands the soul towards the pit, where, like a Lazarus, from his winding sheet arises from the gulf of sleep a ghost of an old passion long since loved and lost. So I, when vanished from man's memory, deep in some dark and sombre chest I lie, an empty flagon they have cast aside, broken and soiled, the dust upon my pride will be your shroud, beloved pestilence, the witness of your might and virulence, sweet poison mixed by angels, bitter cup of life and death, my heart has drunken up. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Reversibility by Charles Baudelaire. Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Angel of Gaiety. Have you tasted grief, shame and remorse and sobs and weary spite, and the vague terrors of the fearful night that crushed the heart up like a crumpled leaf? Angel of gaiety, have you tasted grief? Angel of kindness, have you tasted hate, with hands clenched in the shade and tears of gall, when vengeance beats her hellish battle call and makes herself the captain of our fate? Angel of kindness, have you tasted hate? Angel of health, did ever you know pain, Which like an exile trails his tired footfalls The cold length of the white infirmary walls, With lips compressed, seeking the sun in vain? Angel of health, did ever you know pain? Angel of beauty, do you wrinkles know? Know you the fear of age, the torment vile of reading secret horror in the smile of eyes your eyes have loved since long ago? Angel of beauty, do you wrinkles know? Angel of happiness and joy and light, old David would have asked for youth afresh from the pure touch of your enchanted flesh. I but implore your prayers to aid my plight, angel of happiness and joy and light. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Eyes of Beauty by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson You are a sky of autumn, pale and rose. 
but all the sea of sadness in my blood surges and ebbing leaves my lips morose salt with the memory of the bitter flood in vain your hand glides my faint bosom o'er that which you seek beloved is desecrate by woman's tooth and talon ah no more seek in me for a heart which those dogs ate it is a ruin where the jackals rest and rend and tear and glut themselves and slay a perfume swims about your naked breast beauty hard scourge of spirits have your way with flame-like eyes that at bright feasts have flared burn up these tatters that the beasts have spared end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sonnet of Autumn by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Stunning They say to me, thy clear and crystal eyes, Why dost thou love me so, strange lover mine? Be sweet, be still, my heart and soul despise All save that antique, brute-like faith of thine and will not bear the secret of their shame to thee whose hand soothes me to slumbers long nor their black legend write for thee in flame passion i hate a spirit does me wrong let us love gently love from his retreat ambushed and shadowy bends his fatal bow and i too well his ancient arrows know crime horror folly o oh, pale marguerite thou art as i a bright sun fallen low o oh, my so white my so cold marguerite and a poem this recording is in the public domain The Remorse of the Dead by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug O shadowy beauty mine, when thou shalt sleep in the deep heart of a black marble tomb, when thou for mansion and for bower shalt keep only one rainy cave of hollow gloom, and when the stone upon thy trembling breast and on thy straight sweet body's supple grace crushes thy will and keeps thy heart at rest and holds those feet from their adventurous race then the deep grave who shares my reverie for the deep grave is i the poet's friend during long nights when sleep is far from thee shall whisper ah thou didst not comprehend the dead wept thus thou woman frail and weak and like remorse, the worm shall gnaw thy cheek. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ghost by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Stunning Softly as brown-eyed angels rove I will return to thy alcove, And glide upon the night to thee, Treading the shadow silently. And I will give to thee my own Kisses as icy as the moon, And the caresses of a snake, Cold gliding in the thorny brake. And when returns the livid morn, Thou shalt find all my place forlorn, And chilly till the falling night. Others would rule by tenderness over thy life and youthfulness, but I would conquer thee by fright. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Chua Madonna by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Mary Madonna, mistress, I would build for thee an altar deep in the sad soul of me and in the darkest corner of my heart from mortal hopes and mocking eyes apart carve of enamels blue and gold a shrine for thee to stand erect in image divine and with a mighty crown thou shalt be crowned Wrought of the gold of my smooth breast, set round with a story crystal rhymes, and I will make, O oh, mortal maid, a mantle for thy sake, and to weave it of my jealousy, a gown, heavy, barbaric, stiff, and weighted down with my distrust, and brought around the hem, not bells, but all my tears in place of them, and then thy wavering, trembling robe shall be all the desires that rise and fall in me, from mountain peaks to valleys of repose, kissing thy lovely body's white and rose, for thy humiliated feet divine, of my respect I'll make the sleepers fine, which, prisoning them within a gentle fold, shall keep their imprint like a faithful mould. And if my heart, unwearing and discreet, can make no moon of silver for thy feet, to have for footstool, then thy heel shall rest upon the snake that gnaws within my breast, victorious queen of whom our hope is born, and thou shalt trample down and make a scorn of the vile reptile swelling up with hate, and thou shalt see my thoughts all consecrate, like candles set before thy flower strewn shrine, O queen of virgins, and the taper shine shall gleam a star like in the vault of blue with eyes of flame for ever watching you. Why all the love and worship in my sense will be sweet smoke of mere and frankincense. Ceaselessly up to thee, white peak of snow, my stormy spirit will in vapours go. And last, to make thy drama all complete, that love and cruelty may mix and meet, I thy remorseful torture will take all the seven deadly sins and from them make, in darkest joy, seven knives, cruel edged and keen, and like a juggler choosing, O oh my queen, that spot profound whence love and mercy start, I'll plunge them all within thy panting heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sky by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Wherever he be, on water or on land, Under pale suns or climes that flames enfold, One of Christ's own, or of Cythera's band, Shadowy beggar, or Croesus, rich with gold, Citizen, peasant, student, tramp, Whate'er his little brain may be, alive or dead, Man knows the fear of mystery everywhere, And peeps with trembling glances overhead. The heaven above, a strangling cavern wall, The light and ceiling of a music hall, Where every actor treads a bloody soil, The hermit's hope, the terror of the sod, the sky, the blackened lid of the mighty pot, where the vast human generations boil. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Spleen by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug I'm like some king in whose corrupted veins flows aged blood, who rules a land of reins, who, young in years, is old in all distress, who flees good counsel to find weariness among his dogs and playthings, who is stirred neither by hunting hound nor hunting bird, whose weary face emotion moves no more e'en when his people die before his door. His favourite jester's most fantastic wile Upon that sick, cruel face can raise no smile. The courtly dames, 
to whom all kings are good, can lighten this young skeleton's dull mood no more with shameless toilets. In his gloom, even his lilied bed becomes a tomb. The sage who takes his gold essays in vain to purge away the old corrupted strain. His baths of blood, that in days of old the Romans used when their hot blood grew cold, will never warm this dead man's bloodless pains, for green Lethean water fills his veins. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Owls by Charles Baldelaire Read for LibriVox.org By Stunning Under the overhanging yews The dark owls sit in solemn state Like stranger gods by twos and twos Their red eyes gleam, they meditate Motionless thus they sit and dream Until that melancholy hour when, with the sun's last fading gleam, the nightly shades assume their power. From their still attitude the wise will learn, with terror to despise, all tumult, movement, and unrest. For he who follows every shade carries the memory in his breast of each unhappy journey made. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Beyond One DC by Charles Baudelaire. Read for LibriVox.org. Here is the chamber consecrate, wherein this maiden delicate and enigmatically sedate fans herself while the moments creep upon her cushions half asleep and hears the fountains plash and weep dorothy's chamber undefiled the winds and waters sing afar their song of sighing strange and wild to lull to sleep the petted child from head to foot with subtle care slaves have perfumed her delicate skin with odorous oils and benzoin and flowers faint in a corner there end of poem this recording is in the public domain Music by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Ara Craig Music doth oft uplift me like a sea Towards my planet pale Then through dark fogs or heaven's affinity I lift my wandering sail With breast advanced, drinking the winds that flee And through the cordage wail I mount the hurrying waves Night hides from me beneath her somber veil I feel the tremblings of all passions known to ships before the breeze, cradled by gentle winds or tempest blown. I pass the abysmal seas that are, when calm, the mirror level and fair of my despair. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Contemplation by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org Thou, O oh my grief, be wise and tranquil still. The eve is thine, which even now drops down, To carry peace or care to human will, And in a misty veil enfolds the town while the vile mortals of the multitude by pleasure cruel tormentor goaded on gather remorseful blossoms 
in a light mood. Grief, place thy hand in mine. Let us be gone, far from them. Lo, see how the vanished years, in robes outworn, lean over heaven's rim, and from the water, smiling through her tears. Remorse arises, and the sun grows dim, and in the east, her long shroud trailing light. List, O oh my grief, the gentle steps of night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Brown Beggar Maid by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone White maiden with the russet hair, Whose garments through their holes declare That poverty is part of you, And beauty too. To me, a sorry bard and mean, Your youthful beauty, frail and lean, With summer freckles here and there, Is sweet and fair. Your sabbats tread the road of chance, And not one queen of old romance Carried her velvet shoes and lace With half your grace. In place of tatters far too short, Let the proud garments worn at court Fall down with rustling fold and pleat About your feet. In place of stockings worn and old, Let a keen dagger all of gold Gleam in your garter for the eyes Of Rue's wise. Let ribbons carelessly untied Reveal to us the radiant pride Of your white bosom purer far Than any star. Let your white arms uncovered shine, Polished and smooth and half divine, And let your elfish fingers chase With riotous grace The purest pearls that softly glow, The sweetest sonnets of Bellow, Offered by gallants ere they fight For your delight and many fawning rhymers who inscribe their first thin book to you will contemplate upon the stair your slipper fair and many a page who plays at cards and many lords and many bards will watch your going forth and burn for your return and you will count before your glass more kisses than the lily has, and more than one Valois will sigh when you pass by. But meanwhile you are on the tramp, begging your living in the damp, wandering mean streets and alleys o'er, from door to door, and shilling bangles in a shop calls you with eager eyes to stop and i alas have not a son to give to you then go with no more ornament pearl diamond or subtle scent than your own fragile naked grace and lovely face end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Swan by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Adrian Stevens Andromash, I think of you The stream, the poor sad mirror Where in bygone days Shone all the majesty of your widowed grief The lying Simois flooded by your tears made all my fertile memory blossom forth as I passed by the new-built carousel. 
Old Paris is no more. A town, alas, changes more quickly than man's heart may change. Yet, in my mind, I still can see the booths, the heaps of brick and rough-hewn capitals, the grass, the stones, all over green with moss, the debris and the square-set heaps of tiles. There a menagerie was once outspread, and there I saw, one morning, at the hour when toil awakes beneath the cold, clear sky, and the road roars upon the silent air, a swan who had escaped his cage and walked on the dry pavement with his webby feet and trailed his spotless plumage on the ground. And near a waterless stream the piteous swan opened his beak, and bathing in the dust his nervous wings he cried, his heart the while filled with a vision of his own fair lake. O oh, water, when wilt thou come in rain? Lightning, when wilt thou glitter? Sometimes yet I see the hapless bird, strange, fatal myth, like him that Ovid writes of, lifting up unto the cruelly blue ironic heavens, with stretched convulsive neck a thirsty face, as though he sent reproaches up to God. Two. Paris may change, my melancholy is fixed, new palaces and scaffoldings and blocks and suburbs old are symbols all to me, whose memories are as heavy as a stone. And so, before the Louvre, to vex my soul, the image came of my majestic swan with his mad gestures foolish and sublime, as of an exile whom one great desire gnaws with no truce. And then I thought of you, Andromash, torn from your hero's arms, beneath the hand of Pyrrhus in his pride. Bent o'er an empty tomb in ecstasy, widow of Hector, wife of Helenus, and the negress, wan and fistical, tramping the mud, and with her haggard eyes seeking beyond the mighty walls of fog the absent palm trees of proud Africa, of all who lose that which they never find, of all who drink of tears, all whom grey grief gives suck to as the kindly wolf gave suck, of meagre orphans who like blossoms fade, and one old memory, like a crying horn, sounds through the forest where my soul is lost. I think of sailors on some isle forgotten, of captives vanquished, and of many more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Seven Old Men by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Adrian Stevens O oh, swarming city, city full of dreams, Where in full day the spectre walks and speaks, Mighty colossus in your narrow veins, My story flows as flows the rising sap. One morn, disputing with my tired soul, and like a hero stiffening all my nerves, I trod a suburb shaken by the jar of rolling wheels, where the fog magnified the houses either side of that sad street. So they seemed like two wharves, the ebbing flood leaves desolate by the riverside. A mist, unclean, and yellow, inundated space, a scene that would have pleased an actor's soul. Then suddenly, an aged man, whose rags were yellow as the rainy sky, whose looks should have brought arms in floods upon his head, 
without the misery gleaming in his eye, appeared before me, and his pupils seemed to have been washed with gall. The bitter frost sharpened his glance, and from his chin a beard, sword stiff and ragged, Judas-like stuck forth. He was not bent, but broken, his backbone made a so true right angle with his legs that as he walked, the tapping stick which gave the finish to the picture made him seem like some infirm and stumbling quadruped or a three-legged Jew. Through snow and mud he walked with troubled and uncertain gait as though his sabots trod upon the dead, indifferent, and hostile to the world. His double follows him, tatters and stick and back and eye and beard, all were the same, out of the same hell, indistinguishable, these centenarian twins, these spectres odd, trod the same pace towards some end unknown. To what fell complot was I then exposed, humiliated by what evil chance, for as the minutes one by one went by, seven times I saw this sinister old man repeat his image there before my eyes. Let him who smiles at my inquietude, who never trembled at a fear like mine, know that in their decrepitude's despite, these seven old hideous monsters had the mien of beings immortal. Then, I thought, must I, undying, contemplate the awful eighth, inexorable, fatal and ironic double, disgusting phoenix, father of himself and his own son? In terror, then I turned my back upon the infernal band and fled to my own place and closed my door distraught and like a drunkard who sees all things twice with feverish troubled spirit, chilly and sick, wounded by mystery and absurdity. In vain, my reason tried to cross the bar, the whirling storm that drove her back again, and my soul tossed and tossed, an outworn wreck, masterless upon a monstrous, shoreless sea. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Little Old Women by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Adrian Stevens Deep in the tortuous folds of ancient towns, Where all, even horror, to enchantment turns, I watch, obedient to my fatal mood, For the decrepit, strange and charming beings, The dislocated monsters that of old were lovely women, Lais or Eponine, hunchbacked and broken, Crooked though they be, let us still love them, for they still have souls. They creep along wrapped in their chilly rags, beneath the whipping of the wicked wind. They tremble when an omnibus rolls by, and at their sides, a relic of the past, a little flower embroidered satchel hangs. They trot about, most like two marionettes. They drag themselves, as does a wounded beast or dance unwillingly as a clapping bell, where hangs and swings a demon without pity. Though they be broken, they have piercing eyes that shine like pools where water sleeps at night, the astonished and divine eyes of a child who laughs at all that glitters in the world. Have you not seen that most old women's shrouds a little like the shroud of a dead child? Wise death, in token of his happy whim, wraps old and young in one enfolding sheet. And when I see a phantom, frail and wan, traverse the swarming picture that is parry, it ever seems as though the delicate thing trod with soft steps towards a cradle new. 
and then I wonder, seeing the twisted form, how many times must workmen change the shape of boxes where at length such limbs are laid. These eyes are wells brimmed with a million tears, crucibles where the cooling metal pales, mysterious eyes that are strong charms to him whose lifelong nurse has been austere disaster. 2. The lovesick vestal of the old Frascitti, Princess of Thalia, alas, whose name only the prompter knows, and he is dead, Bygone celebrities that in bygone days the Tivoli o'ershadowed in their bloom. All charm me, yet amongst these beings frail three turning pain to honey sweetness said to the devotion that has lent them wings. Lift me, O powerful hippogriff, to the skies. One by her country to despair was driven, one by her husband overwhelmed with grief, one wounded by her child, Madonna-like, each could have made a river with her tears. 3. Oft have I followed one of these old women, one among others when the falling sun reddened the heavens with a crimson wound, pensive apart, she rested on a bench to hear the brazen music of the band played by the soldiers in the public park to pour some courage into citizens' hearts on golden eves when all the world revives. Proud and erect, she drank the music in, the lively and the warlike call to arms. Her eyes blinked like an ancient eagle's eyes. Her forehead seemed to await the laurel crown. 4. Thus do you wander, uncomplaining stoics through all the chaos of the living town, mothers with bleeding hearts, saints, courtesans, whose names of yore were on the lips of all, who were all glory and all grace, and now none know you, and the brutish drunkard stops, insulting you with his derisive love, and cowardly urchins call behind your back. Ashamed of living, withered shadows all, with fear-bowed backs you creep beside the walls, and none salute you, destined to loneliness, refuse of time ripe for eternity, but I, who watch you tenderly afar, with unquiet eyes on your uncertain steps, as though I were your father, I, oh wonder, unknown to you, taste secret hidden joy. I see your maiden passions bud and bloom, sombre or luminous, and your lost days unroll before me while my heart enjoys all your old vices, and my soul expands to all the virtues that have once been yours. Ruined, and my sisters, O oh congenerate hearts, octogenarian eaves, o'er whom is stretched God's awful claw, where will you be tomorrow? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Madrigal of Sorrow by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Adrian Stevens What do I care, though you be wise? Be sad, be beautiful, your tears but add one more charm to your eyes as streams to valleys where they rise, and fairer every flower appears. After the storm I love you most, when joy has fled your brow downcast, when your heart is in horror lost, and o'er your present, like a ghost, floats the dark shadow of the past. I love you when the teardrop flows, hotter than blood from your large eye, when I would hush you to repose, your heavy pain breaks forth and grows into a loud and tortured cry. And then, voluptuousness divine, delicious ritual and profound, I drink in every sob like wine, and dream that in your deep heart shine the pearls wherein your eyes were drowned. I know your heart, 
which overflows with outworn loves long cast aside, still like a furnace flames and glows, and you within your breast enclose the damned soul's unbending pride. But till your dreams without release reflect the leaping flames of hell, till in a nightmare without cease you dream of poison to bring peace, and love cold steel and powder well, and tremble at each opened door, and feel for every man distrust, and shudder at the striking hour, till then you have not felt the power of irresistible disgust. My queen, my slave, whose love is fear, when you awaken shuddering, until that awful hour be here, you cannot say at midnight drear, I am your equal, O oh my king. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ideal by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Adrian Stevens not all the beauties in old prints vignetted, the worthless products of an outworn age, with slippered feet and fingers castaneted, the thirst of hearts like this heart can assuage. To Gavani, the poet of Chloroses, I leave his troops of beauties sick and wan. I cannot find among these pale, pale roses the red ideal mine eyes would gaze upon. Lady Macbeth, the lovely star of crime, the Greek poet's dream boy in a northern clime. Ah, she could quench my dark heart's deep desiring, or Michelangelo's dark daughter, Night, in a strange posture, dreamily admiring her beauty, fashioned for a giant's delight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mist in Rain by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Agnes Robert Bear Autumns and winters, springs of mire and rain, seasons of sleep, I sing your praises aloud, for thus I love to wrap my heart and brain in some dim tomb beneath a vapory shroud, in the wide plain where revels the cold wind, through long nights when the weathercock whirls round, more free than in warm summer day my mind lifts wide her raven pinions from the ground unto a heart filled with funeral things that since old days hoar-frost have gathered on naught is more sweet o pallid queenly springs than the long pageant of your shadows wan unless it be on moonless eves to weep on some chance bed and rock our griefs to sleep End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sunset by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Fair as the sun when first he flames above, Flinging his joy down in a happy beam, And happy he who can salute with love The sunset far more glorious than a dream. Flower, stream, and furrow, I've seen them all, and the sun's eye swoon like one trembling heart. Though it be late, let us with speed depart to catch at least one last ray ere it fall. But I pursue the fading god in vain, for conquering night makes firm her dark domain. Mist and gloom fall, and terrors glide between, in graveyard odors and the shadows swim and my faint footsteps on the marsh's rim bruise the cold snail and crawling toad unseen. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Corpse by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Remember, my beloved, what thing we met by the roadside on that sweet summer day, there on a grassy couch with pebbles set, a loathsome body lay, 
the wanton limbs stiff stretched into the air, steaming with exhalations vile and dank, in ruthless cynic fashion had laid bare the swollen side and flank. On this decay the sun shone hot from heaven, as though with chemic heat to broil and burn, and unto nature all that she had given a hundredfold return. The sky smiled down upon the horror there, as on a flower that opens to the day. So awful an infection smote the air, almost you swooned away. The swarming flies hummed on the putrid side, whence poured the maggots in a darkling stream, that ran along these tatters of life's pride with a liquescent gleam. And like a wave the maggots rose and fell, the murmuring flies swirled round in busy strife, it seemed as though a vague breath came to swell and multiply with life the hideous corpse. From all this living world a music as of wind and water ran, or as of grain and rhythmic motion swirled by the swift winterer's fan. And then the vague forms like a dream died out, or like some distant scene that slowly falls upon the artist's canvas, that with doubt he only half recalls, a homeless dog behind the boulders lay, and watched us both with angry eyes forlorn, waiting a chance to come and take away the morsel she had torn. And you, even you, will be like this drear thing, a vile infection man may not endure, star that I yearn to, sun that lights my spring, O oh, passionate and pure. Yes, such will you be, queen of every grace, when the last sacramental words are said and beneath grass and flowers that lovely face moulders among the dead. Then, O beloved, whisper to the worm that crawls up to devour you with a kiss, that I still guard in memory the dear form of love that comes to this. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An Allegory by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin S. Here is a woman, richly clad and fair, Who in her wine dips her long, heavy hair. Love's claws and that sharp poison which is sin Are dulled against the granite of her skin. Death she defies, debauch she smiles upon, For their sharp scythe like talons every one pass by her in their all-destructive play, leaving her beauty till a later day. Goddess she walks, sultana in her leisure. She has Mohammed's faith that heaven is pleasure, and bids all men forget the world's alarms upon her breast, between her open arms. She knows, and she believes, this sterile maid, without whom the world's onward dream would fade, that bodily beauty is the supreme gift, which may from every sin the terror lift. Hell she ignores, and purgatory defies, and when black night shall roll before her eyes, she will look straight in death's grim face forlorn, without remorse or hate, as one new-born. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Accursed by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Like pensive herds at rest upon the sands, These to the sea horizons turn their eyes, Out of their folded feet and clinging hands, Bitter sharp tremblings and soft languors rise. Some tread the thicket by the babbling stream, their hearts were untold secrets, ill at ease. Calling the lover of their childhood's dream, they wound the green bark of the shooting trees. Others, like sisters, wander grave and slow among the rocks haunted by spectres thin, where Antony saw as larvae surge and flow the vain bare breasts that tempted him to sin. Some, when the resinous torch of burning wood 
flares in Los Pagan, caverns dark and deep. Call thee to quench the fever in thy blood, Bacchanus who singest, O remorse, to sleep. Then there are those, the scapula bedites, whose long white vestments hide the wisps red stain, who mix in sombre woods on lonely nights the foam of pleasure with the tears of pain. O virgins, demons, monsters, martyrs, ye, who scorn whatever actual appears, saints, satyrs, seekers of infinity, so full of cries, so full of bitter tears, to whom my soul has followed into hell, I love and pity, O sad sisters mine, tore thirsts unquenched, your pains no tongue can tell, and your great hearts, those urns of love divine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. La Beatrice by Charles Baudelaire. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. In a burnt ashen land where no herb grew, I to the winds my cries of anguish threw, and in my thoughts in that sad place apart, pricked gently with the poniard o'er my heart. Then in full noon above my head a cloud descended tempest swollen and a crowd of wild lascivious spirits huddled there the cruel and curious demons of the air who coldly to consider me began then as a crowd jeers some unhappy man exchanging gestures winking with their eyes i heard a laughing and a whispering rise let us at leisure contemplate this clown this shadow of hamlet aping hamlet's frown with wandering eyes and hair upon the wind is not a pity that this empty mind this tramp this actor out of work this droll because he knows how to assume a role should dream that eagles and insects streams and woods stand still to hear him chant his dolorous moods even unto us who made these ancient things the fool his public lamentation sings with pride as lofty as the towering cloud i would have stilled these clamouring demons loud and turned in scorn my sovereign head away had i not seen o oh, sight to dim the day there in the middle of the troop obscene the proud and peerless beauty of my queen she laughed with them at all my dark distress and gave to each in turn a vile caress end of poem this recording is in the public domain the soul of wine by charles baudelaire read for librivox dot org by kevin s one eve in the bottle sang the soul of wine man unto thee dear disinherited i sing a song of love and light divine prisoned in glass beneath my seals of red i know thou laborest on the hill of fire in sweat and pain beneath the flaming sun to give the life and soul my vine's desire and i am grateful for thy labors done for i find joys unnumbered when i 
laved the throat of man by travail long outworn and his hot bosom is a sweeter grave of sounder sleep than my cold caves forlorn hearest thou not the echoing sabbath sound the hope that whispers in my trembling breast thy elbows on the table gaze around glorify me with joy and be at rest to thy wife's eyes i'll bring their long-lost gleam i'll bring back to thy child his strength and light to him life's fragile athlete i will seem rare oil that firms his muscle for the fight i flow in man's heart as ambrosia flows the grain the eternal sower casts in the sod from our first loves the first fair verse arose flower-like aspiring to the heavens and god end of poem this recording is in the public domain the wine of lovers by charles baudelaire read for LibriVox.org by c cam space rolls today her splendor round unbridled spurless without bound mount we upon the wings of wine for skies fantastic and divine let us like angels tortured by some wild delirious fantasy follow the far-off mirage born in the blue crystal of the morn and gently balanced on the wing of the wild whirlwind we will ride rejoicing with the joyous thing my sister floating side by side fly we unceasing whither gleams the distant heaven of my dreams end of poem this recording is in the public domain the death of lovers by charles baudelaire read for librivox dot org by agnes robert bear there shall be couches whence faint odors rise divans like sepulchres deep and profound strange flowers that bloomed beneath diviner skies the deathbed of our love shall breathe around and guarding their last embers till the end our hearts shall be the torches of the shrine and their two leaping flames shall fade and blend in the twin mirrors of your soul and mine and through the eve of rose and mystic blue a beam of love shall pass from me to you like a long sigh charged with a last farewell and later still an angel flinging wide the gate shall bring to life with joyful spell the tarnished mirrors and the flames that died end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Death of the Poor by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Agnes Robert Bear Death is consoler, and death brings to life The end of all, the solitary hope We, drunk with death's elixir, face the strife Take heart, and mount till eve the weary slope Across the storm, the hoar-frost, and the snow Death on our dark horizon pulses clear. Death is the famous hostel we all know, Where we may rest and sleep and have good cheer. Death is an angel whose magnetic palms Bring dreams of ecstasy and slumberous calms To smooth the beds of naked men and poor. Death is the mystic granary of God, The poor man's purse, his fatherland of yore, The gate that opens into heaven's untrod. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Benediction by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org When by the high decree of powers supreme The poet came into this world outworn, she who had borne him in a ghastly dream clenched blasphemous hands at god and cried in scorn oh rather had i borne a writhing knot of unclean vipers than my breast should nurse this vile derision 
of my joy begot to be my expiation and my curse since of all women thou hast made of me unto my husband a disgust and shame since i may not cast this monstrosity like an old love epistle to the flame i will pour out thine overwhelming hate on this the accursed weapon of thy spite this stunted tree i will so desecrate that not one tainted bud shall see the light so foaming with the foam of hate and shame blind unto god's design inexorable with her own hand she fed the purging flame to crimes maternal consecrate in hell meanwhile beneath an angel's care unseen the child disowned grows drunken with the sun his food and drink though they be poor and mean with streams of nectar and ambrosia run speaking to clouds and playing with the wind with joy he sings the sad way of the rude his shadowing pilgrim spirit weeps behind to see him gay as birds are in the wood those he would love look sideways and with fear or taking courage from his aspect mild sort who should first bring to his eye the tear and spent their anger on the dreaming child with all the bread and wine the poet must eat they mingled earth and ash and excrement all things he touched were spurned beneath their feet they mourned if they must tread the road he went his wife ran crying in the public square since he has found me worthy to adore shall i not be as antique idols were with gold and with bright colours painted o'er i will be drunk with nard and frankincense with myrrh and knees bowed down and flesh and wine can i not smiling in his lovesick sense usurp the homage due to beings divine i will lay on him my fierce fragile hand when i am weary of the impious play for well these harpy talons understand to furrow to his heart their crimson way i'll tear the red thing beating from his breast to cast it with disdain upon the ground like a young bird torn trembling from the nest his heart shall go to gorge my favourite hound to the far heaven where gleams a splendid throne the poet uplifts his arms in calm delight and the vast beams from his pure spirit flown wrap all the furious peoples from his sight thou o my god be blessed who givest pain the balm divine for each imperfect heart the strong pure essence cleansing every stain of sin that keeps us from thy joys apart among the numbers of thy legions blest i know a place awaits the poet there him thou hast bid attend the eternal feast that thrones and virtues and dominions share i know the one thing noble is a grief withstanding earth's and hell's destructive tooth and i through all my dolorous life am brief 
to gain the mystic crown must cry the truth the jewels lost in palmyra of old metals unknown pearls of the outer sea are far too dim to set within the gold of the bright crown that time prepares for me for it is wrought of pure unmingled light dipped in the white flame whence all flame is born the flame that makes all eyes though diamond bright seem obscure mirrors darkened and forlorn end of poem this recording is in the public domain gypsies travelling by charles baudelaire read for LibriVox.org by alan lawley the tribe prophetic with the eyes of fire went forth last night their little ones at rest each on his mother's back with his desire set on the ready treasure of her breast laden with shining arms the men folk tread by the long wagons where their goods lie hidden they watch the heaven with eyes grown weary of hopeless dreams that come to them unbidden the grasshopper from out his sandy screen watching them pass redoubles his shrill song diane who loves them makes the grass more green and makes the rock ground water for this throng of ever wandering ones whose calm i see familiar realms of darkness yet to be end of poem this recording is in the public domain robed in a silken robe by charles baudelaire read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone robed in a silken robe that shines and shakes she seems to dance whene'er she treads the sod like the long serpent that a fakir makes dance to the waving cadence of a rod as the sad sand upon the desert's verge insensible to mortal grief and strife as the long weeds that float among the surge she folds indifference round her budding life her eyes are carved of minerals pure and cold and in her strange symbolic nature where an angel mingles with the sphinx of old where all is gold and steel and light and air for ever like a vain star unafraid shines the cold hauter of the sterile maid End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Landscape by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Gwen Dillard I would, when I compose my solemn verse, Sleep near the heaven, as do astrologers, Near the high bells, and with a dreaming mind Hear their calm hymns blown to me on the wind. Out of my tower, with chin upon my hands, I'll watch the singing, babbling human bands, And see clock towers like spars against the sky, And heavens that bring thoughts of eternity. And softly through the mist will watch the birth of stars in heaven and lamplight on earth, the threads of smoke that rise above the town, the moon that pours her pale enchantment down. Seasons will pass till autumn fades the rose, and when comes winter with his weary snows, I'll shut the doors and window casements tight and build my fairy palace in the night. Then I'll dream of blue horizons deep, of gardens where the marble fountains weep, of kisses and of ever-singing birds, 
a sinless idol built of innocent words. And trouble knocking at my window pane and at my closet door shall knock in vain. I will not heed him with his stealthy tread, nor from my reverie uplift my head. For I will plunge deep in the pleasure still of summoning the springtime with my will, drawing the sun out of my heart, and there with burning thoughts making a summer air. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Voyage by Charles Baudelaire Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone The world is equal to the child's desire Who plays with pictures by his nursery fire how vast the world by lamp-like seems how small when memory's eyes look back remembering all one morning we set forth with thoughts aflame or heart or laden with desire or shame and cradle to the song of surge and breeze our own infinity on the finite seas some flee the memory of their childhood's home and others flee their fatherland and some star-gazers drowned within a woman's eyes flee from the tyrant circe's witcheries and lest they still be changed to beasts take flight for the embrasured heavens and space and light till one by one the stains her kisses made in biting cold and burning sunlight fade but the true voyagers are they who part from all they love because a wandering heart drives them to fly the fate they cannot fly whose call is ever on they know not why their thoughts are like the clouds that veil a star they dream of change as warriors dream of war and strange wild wishes never twice the same desires no mortal man can give a name two we are like whirling tops and rolling balls for even when the sleepy night-time falls old curiosity still thrusts us on like the cruel angel who goads forth the sun the end of fate fades ever through the air and being nowhere may be anywhere where a man runs hope waking in his breast for ever like a madman seeking rest our souls are wandering ships outwearied and one upon the bridge ask what's ahead the topman's voice with an exultant sound cries love and glory then we run aground each isle the pilot signals when tis late is el dorado promised us by fate imagination spite of her belief finds in the light of dawn a barren reef o oh, the poor seeker after lands that flee shall we not bind and cast into the sea this drunken sailor whose ecstatic mood makes bitterer still the water's weary flood such is an old tramp wandering in the mire dreaming the paradise of his own desire discovering cities of enchanted sleep where'er the light shines on a rubbish heap three strange voyagers what tales of noble deeds deep in your dim sea weary eyes one reads 
open the casket where your memories are and show each jewel fashioned from a star for i would travel without sail or wind and so to lift the sorrow from my mind let your long memories of sea days far fled pass o'er my spirit like a sail outspread what have you seen for we have seen waves and stars and lost sea beaches and known many wars and notwithstanding war and hope and fear we were as weary there as we are here the lights that on the violet sea poured down the suns that set behind some far-off town lit in our hearts the unquiet wish to fly deep in the glimmering distance of the sky the loveliest countries that rich cities bless never contained the strange wild loveliness by fate and chance shaped from the floating cloud and we were always sorrowful and proud desire from joy gains strength in weightier measure desire old tree who draws thy sap from pleasure though thy bark thickens as the years pass by thine arduous branches rise towards the sky and wilt thou still grow taller tree more fair than the tall cypress thus have we with care gathered some flowers to please your eager mood brothers who dream that distant things are good we have seen many a jewel glimmering throne and bowed to idols when wild horns were blown in palaces whose fairy pomp and gleam to your rich men would be a ruinous dream and robes that were a madness to the eyes women whose teeth and nails were stained with dyes wise jugglers round whose neck the serpent winds five and then and then what more six o oh, childish minds forget not that which we found everywhere from top to bottom of the fatal stair above beneath around us and within the weary pageant of immortal sin we have seen woman stupid slave and proud before her own frail foolish beauty bowed and man a greedy cruel lascivious fool slave of the slave a ripple in a pool the martyrs groan the headsman's merry mood and banquet seasoned and perfumed with blood poison that gives the tyrant's power the slip and nations amorous of the brutal whip many religions not unlike our own all in full flight for heaven's resplendent throne and sanctity seeking delight in pain like a sick man of his own sickness vain and mad mortality drunk with its own power as foolish now as in a bygone hour shouting in presence of the tortured christ i curse thee mine own image sacrificed and silly monks in love with lunacy fleeing the troops herded by destiny who seek for peace in opiate slumber furled such is the pageant of the rolling world seven 
O oh, bitter knowledge that the wanderers gain, The world says our own age is little and vain. For ever yesterday, to-day, to-morrow, Tis horror's oasis in the sands of sorrow. Must we depart? If you can rest, remain. Part if you must, some fly, some cower in vain, Hoping that time, the grim and eager foe, Will pass them by, and some run to and fro, Like the apostles or the wandering Jew. Go where they will, the slayer goes there too. And there are some, and these are of the wise, Who die as soon as birth has lit their eyes. But when at length the slayer treads us low, We will have hope and cry, tis time to go. As when of old we parted for Cathay, With wind-blown hair and eyes upon the bay. We will embark upon the shadowy sea, Like youthful wanderers for the first time free. Hear you the lovely and funereal voice That sings, O oh, come all ye whose wandering joys Are set upon the scented lotus flower, For here we sell the fruit's miraculous boon, Come ye and drink the sweet and sleepy power Of the enchanted endless afternoon. 8. O oh, death, old captain, it is time, put forth, We have grown weary of the gloomy north, Though sea and sky are black as ink, lift sail, Our hearts are full of light, and will not fail. O oh, pour thy sleepy poison in the cup, The fire within the heart so burns us up, that we would wander hell and heaven through, Deep in the unknown, seeking something new. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of The Flowers of Evil by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Frank Pierce Sturm